Hi guys, um, it's December 26, 2018. I'm going to be reading comments underneath this video that I posted yesterday. Just talking but wasn't meant to be. Truth got me to love Jesus and... I don't know why I wrote this. I don't remember writing, don't like truth and he betrayed. I honestly do not recall writing this. So... I apologize because one person left most confusing title. Yeah, um, but I don't remember writing these words. So is YouTube changing the title? I don't know. But uh, let's not get bogged down in that. Um, here, here, truth being spoken never fails to ring in the soul. Now, I'm not reading comments like that because I feel the need to defend myself. I am writing, I'm reading comments like that because I'm not the only one who sees the hypocrisy. Um, many people see it. Many Christians also speak about the fake Christians. And one of the reasons why I am doing this is because some comments really upset me. And I am very tired of people not thinking rightly, clearly. They have not done any work. And you reveal that in the comments that you leave. Okay, no work on my brain. No idea how... I have filters that allow me to not listen to somebody and pretty much annihilate them with my own experience because I'm listening with those filters and those filters come from my own experience. And if you haven't done any work, those filters are in your brain and you can't listen carefully to someone else. Instead, you hear what you want to hear. And very often, when you're challenging someone or you're countering their belief system, they don't hear what you say. They don't even think about what you say. They go into attack mode and they make you bad. And it's very clear. But if you think we're going to get anywhere with that kind of thinking, you're very, very wrong. That kind of thinking hurts people. So if you can't do any work on yourself, you hurt people because you haven't given them the respect to actually listen carefully to what they are communicating. Instead, you're responding to yourself. You're not even uh, in a dialogue. It's like a monologue. Okay, I haven't said something. You claim that I've said what I haven't said and then you respond to it, so you're responding to yourself. That manufactured thing you heard, that was not said. And look, Christians are the majority. So, many Christians feel, I only attack Christians. No, I don't attack. I do point out hypocrisy, and it angers me, and it frustrates me, and it's keeping us locked in this nightmare if we cannot rid ourselves of our own hypocrisy we are absolutely 100 percent on that team that creates the nightmare that we all have to live and also understand this there is a ripple effect of everybody's behavior it affects everybody. 
You may not be aware of that ripple effect. You may claim that it's just not, it doesn't exist. And you may claim that your behavior is just so fabulous that you don't cause what you actually cause because you are not capable of self-awareness. It doesn't mean that you got the truth. It means that you're living a lie. And when we don't have self-awareness, we live a lie. Now, the reason the that I actually have posted videos on Christians is because there's so many of you. You're all over the place. You attack. You fight with one another. You cause division. You are the largest group. But you do come with expectation. It's inherent. There's an expectation. When you put a label on yourself, whatever that label is, you call yourself a feminist, you yourself create, you set the stage for those you interact with, those expectations inherent in your labeling yourself something. So you call yourself a Christian. And inherent in that comes the expectations that come from that basic knowledge of knowing Christ. And pretty much the world's people understand. You know, if you're going to give words to the description of Jesus Christ or Jesus the Christ or Yeshua or whatever the name is for that Christian, and by the way, I do want to just bring your attention to two videos that were linked, uh, the Pagan or, um, Origins of Jesus Christ, Comments Disabled. I have noticed <clears throat> that when people post videos challenging the common uh, practice, philosophy of Christianity, they disable comments. Why? Because they know they're going to be ripped to shreds. How dare you? See, I don't have an open mind. I have a closed mind. I have my beliefs. They are right. And you're going against them? You're wrong. That's pretty much the common mentality of whatever religion it is. Um, and I also, here is a pastor, and there will be no rapture, and Jesus is not coming back. Comments disabled. You guys are all over the place. You fight with one another of the Bible. Which Bible is the right Bible? Which name is the right name? Is it Jesus? Is it Yeshua? Um, you fight over when that coming back is going to be. Or there is no coming back. You fight over the rapture. You fight over your interpretations of the, the uh, passages in the Bible. And, you know, it's like, no matter which way you turn, you somehow get an attack from a Christian who has their own belief or their own interpretation. But when you do call yourself a Christian, you are the one who sets the stage for those expectations. You're the one who's calling yourself a Christian, which means that you are a follower of Christ. So, when we think about Christ, we think about truth, real, real, living without that mask and, and living a pretense. We think 
of honesty. We think of love, compassion, care, understanding, patience, tolerance, uh, helping the poor. You're the one who, by calling yourself a Christian, has created those expectations that that is how you live, that that is your practice, how you try your hardest to live a life that exemplifies Christ. You know, it, it, and when you don't see it, your expectation is for everybody to shut up, to not call you out. Your expectation is you be like me. I'm living a pretense by calling myself a Christian and living uh, a, a life that is antithetical to Christ. So I pretend and I demand of you to pretend. Don't call me out on it. That doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. I sure wish it didn't work for an awful lot of people because we need to call one another out. We need to help them get real. We need to help them understand that what they say and what they do, it doesn't match. And when what we say and what we do doesn't match, then we are disintegrated souls. And a disintegrated soul will continue to hurt a lot of people. They leave that trail of hurt behind them. And it's not fair to those they hurt. So I, I'm sorry that so many take offense to what I say, but I am not alone. Yeah, you know, I would assume that even people seeing this video, there will be no rapture. Jesus is not coming back. The huge majority of Christians have already been offended, have already, you know, gone off the deep end and won't, won't listen to it because their minds are closed and they cannot listen to anything that goes against their beliefs. And that's unfortunate. Um, but these comments, one battles not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. I've had in seven years, so many Christians leave. Carol, this is not a battle against flesh and blood. It is a spiritual battle. What does that mean? Okay. Spiritual wickedness is spiritual hypocrisy. So, I absolutely do agree that it is a spiritual war. But claiming yourself a Christian, identifying as a Christian, and then living a life of hypocrisy, that is the spiritual wickedness. And so, no, it's not against flesh and blood. I understand that. We've got to bring that, that battle home. We have to bring the battle to ourselves. It's a personal battle within ourself. You're either on the spiritual path genuinely or you just think you are. And if it is that you just think you are, then you're still the enemy. You need to do the work necessary to discover the truth of your own self. And as more and more people do that, 
the world then does become changed. And that's why you have people like Gandhi saying, be the change you want to see. Because if you don't change, nothing will change. So in order to win this battle, every individual needs to do the work, the personal work, their own truth, look at it, face it, and whatever needs to be changed, change it. Lying is one of the seven things God hates. I have to disagree that the most important commandment is not to lie, but to love God with all your mind, will, and strength, and to love others as yourself. I fully disagree with that. Now, a lot of people believe that that's what God instructs. Well, if there is a God, I don't think God is narcissistic demanding that he be loved. I think he's strong enough to um, to withstand, you know, not being loved by everybody and and people actually railing against him, you know, um, whatever. Lying, I 100% believe that that is the first commandment because everything stems from the lie or truth. So a lot of people say they love God with all their mind, but that spiritual wickedness is operating in them. So they don't even know that they're not there yet. Oh, they claim to, and a lot of people love God with all their mind. They pray, they ask for his guidance, and they lie. They outright lie. They lie about others. They live a pretense, but they love God. Look, if we can't get honest, if we can't face the fact that we have lived a pretense and put on the mask and we are, you know, really uh, operating in the world in a manner that reflects who we think we need to be instead of who we really are. Everything's a lie. Everything's a lie. And, you know, truth is of God and lying is of Satan. Bada bing. Sorry, it's uh, Mark, uh, my hometown man, Mark Cassio, called me out. Don't be a fake ass Christian. Thanks for reminding me. Not all Christians are on the same page. I may disagree with some of your points, but feel the same about the world. The anti-Semitism comes from the resentment of the Zionist system and bankers. Guess what? That needs to be worked out. Because it's not every Jew. Oh, a lot of people do believe it's the Jews. All Jews get rid of them and the world will be fine. What about... What about the large majority of Christians who live a pretense, who lie, who, who take, you know, the fruits of the satanic system? You really think just, hey, let's get rid of this tiny segment of the world's population and everything will be just hunky-dory. All righty. No. Um, so the anti-Semitism, you know, you, you really do have to come to a place where you recognize it in yourself and... How is it that I could possibly think that it's all Jews um, when so many Jews, well, are kind of just like me? Oh, there's cultural differences, but they're just as indoctrinated. They live the pretense. 
you know, it's uh, just like a lot of Christians. There's a lot of Jews who fight against their government just like you know, those here in America. Uh, so when I see comments like that, you are so not about Christ. So it, it's like, okay. Um, and I have to wonder, why do you even call yourself a Christian? Is it to make yourself feel better? You, you put that, you give yourself that identity because that identity does uh, conjure up that someone's honest, loving, compassionate, caring, understanding, they have patience, they've got tolerance, um, they're about truth, they're real, they're... But get rid of all of the Jews. And when I think of how many times I've asked, okay, what would Christ do in, you know, particular situations or or what would Christ say? I see these people who are so filled with hate that they want all Jews gone from the earth and they must understand that nothing about that is Christ-like. How do they reconcile, reconcile these great inconsistencies? They don't. They do whatever works for them. It's They're not about Christ. They're not about truth. They're about themselves. But, it, it, you know, what really angers me is these kinds of comments. It saddens me to hear your hatred of Christians. Huh. You know, if people hear hatred, I have to wonder about them. I've, I've actually tried to imagine what hate feels like. I don't hate. There's nothing I hate. I oh boy, do I hate behaviors that hurt other people. Um, I do really hate lying. I don't hate groups of people or people. I mean, that is so, I, I could imagine, that is a feeling that is so powerful and so opposite love. Um, but I can't, like, I've tried to imagine how it is my own family, the malignant narcissistic family. What could possibly make them do what they do? You know, destroy their own daughter or sister, not care at all, cover her life in lies, and actually be sadistic towards her when they finally manage to get her homeless. And then you got that brother who manages for the first time to say happy birthday on your birthday, which is Christmas Eve, when he, the flying monkey, and the narcissistic mother joined together to do that, um, the grand finale manipulation that got her homeless and she's now living in her car. And you on Christmas Eve finally managed to say happy birthday on the actual birthday in a subject heading email, happy birthday, I'm sorry you're suffering. Wow. So that is a hatred that is so incomprehensible to me. But I have said over and over and over again, I don't hate Christians. And seven years of so many people hearing, I hate Christians. And seven years of coming back and saying, I don't hate Christians. I hate 
hypocrisy. And when I see it, whether you call yourself a Christian or not, I don't think of you as a Christian. I just think of you as just a regular American doing the same old game. Your Christianity is um, not something that I even think about because, because you haven't triggered any, any signs of it <laughs> in your life. So you ignore it. I ignore it. You're a hypocrite, whether you're Christian or not. You're still living that pretense. And the Christians that I've had in my life have lied about me, have lied outright to me over and over and over again. That's wrong behavior, whether you're Christian or not. It's when the Christians come with their subtle or not so subtle arrogance. I know the truth. I'm a Christian. I have the truth. We've cornered the truth. No one else has. So until you claim that Jesus is your savior, you don't have the truth. Wow, remarkable. Um, I get really perturbed at the forcing of beliefs upon me that I don't have. But I've got to have them. And if I don't have them, I'm going to hell. See, you make your voice very loud. Whereas other uh, groups of uh, those in other religions, they don't. You do. But then you expect no blowback blow from it. And sorry. It's uh, remarkable, but that is an abject lie right there. So this, this subscriber has heard, I hate Christians. Um, and then, because clearly they didn't want to hear what I was saying, they couldn't just be open-minded and hear me. Instead, they heard me attacking all Christians with a hatred. Now, why does that really upset me? Because I have my own family who destroyed my life with lies. You have done the same thing. Now, you didn't destroy my life, but you've lied about me. When you're the scapegoat of that malignant narcissistic family, and it ranges, it's on a continuum, the severity. Of that narcissism, oh, it can destroy you. But then you have to live. Um, piled, saturated in these lies told about you. You can't get out from under them. Because, well, people, well, they think, look, a family wouldn't do that. A mother wouldn't do that. You must have done something, and you're lying. Um, going on and on and on. But you have to live what they claim you are. And what they claim you are is just a projection of their own you know, characteristics. They claim you're filled with hate when you're not. So when you read that, you realize, first of all, you're dealing with somebody who does not know how to listen and obviously got triggered, and then they want to make you bad. You know, it's the 
and this happens there are so many who do this now a lot of people heard that I wasn't talking about all Christians and a lot of Christians are actually saying thank you for speaking on this but this Christian claims I hate all of them and I'm filled uh, to hear your hatred of Christians when I simply am calling out the hypocrisy. You have to remember everything you describe that bothers you about Christians is what we know as the great falling away that must take place. Something told me not to watch this, lol. You have ruined my Christmas, which you may find funny, but it's true. Well, sorry if I've ruined your Christmas, but I don't know what to do with that. Uh, don't let the devil keep you in that frame of mind. Seems he has used you to take some pot shots at the Lord today. I'm taking pot shots at the Lord? Wow. So this is someone who really doesn't know how to listen. At all. I've never taken pot shots at the Lord. I've never taken pot shots at Jesus. I've taken pot shots at hypocrites. But for some reason, they can't hear that. So I write, I'm so tired of this. You hate Christians. I'm so sorry you don't know how to listen. I've gotten this for seven years. You hate Christians. I have Christians in my life I don't hate. I've had Christians greatly betray me. I don't hate them. Oh, I get angry. I get furious. The last so devastated me that I've not been able to rebound. I don't hate her. But when you are claiming things about me that are not true, when suddenly you have to attack, claiming I'm attacking, when you put your really immoral behaviors and project them onto me, and then when someone comes back and says, I hate it, uh, or I'm so tired of you hating, or so tired of people saying you hate Christians, and I say, I'm sorry you don't know how to listen, which is the truth right there, then they come back and claim you're bitter. Deflection. So I don't get a response to my point. I get this person digging the hole deeper for me. You can say anything you want about me as long as it's the truth. Good and bad. I don't like it and I have responded to people who have left comments on the other side of you know, there's the good and the bad. So on the good side, when people have left comments that I know is not true about me, I've responded to that. It doesn't matter. You know, lying about someone, about how great they are, lying about someone, about how bad they are, it's still a lie. So, this is what happens when you have very immature people who don't know how to think. And they get personally offended when you have made it clear you're not talking about all Christians. You know, I think about the Christians that I subscribe to. Uh, In Truth by Grace, I have a lot of respect for 
I've even tried to imagine, in truth, by grace, and I, um, you know, just if we lived in the same area, would we be friends? I don't think so. I think we would probably have our, you know, differences. Um, would I hate her? No. Absolutely not. Would I continue to respect her? Yeah. Because I believe that that woman is real. Now, her real and my real might conflict. I'm not saying that I wouldn't like her, but I see us both rather passionate about truth. Um, and I could be, you know, very, very wrong. But my respect for that woman is strong. I, it's, it is unwavering at this point. Do I believe what she believes? No, I don't need to. I don't need to. And I've never gotten any pressure from In Truth by Grace that I've got to believe what she believes. But she's the Christian who also is taking action. And can I see In Truth by Grace lying to people in her life? I can't. Because that passion about truth has never once resonated insincere. Not what I've heard. I hear a sincerity. It's consistent. And when I hear that and it's consistent, it then I would imagine be how she lives. Enter the stars. I have a lot of respect for I don't have the same beliefs. I think, um, you know, based on comments that I get from both, that there's a mutual respect. Certainly, it demonstrates itself in the comment section. So I can't speak to what they think or feel about me, but enter the stars. Okay. Uh, I do think also that their Christianity has moved them along to, to a place of they have to live the principles. So, Enter the Stars. Now, years ago, he posted a video on his life experience, and I, I might get some of this wrong, but I believe that he was a pharmaceutical rep making an awful lot of money. And when he realized what he was doing, I'm putting words in his mouth, which I don't want to do, but what I heard was he got the evil of how he was living, you know, how he was making his money, and he couldn't do it anymore. That I have undying respect for. So how anybody could claim that I hate Christians, that is something personal with you, and it's a real problem because I could imagine that if you're leaving a comment like that, you're hurting other people in your life with your the way you have to degrade somebody else so that you don't have to take a look at yourself. You know, you say, so I ruined your Christmas, which means something is very weak inside you. Your beliefs are very weak, clearly. Um, if what I say ruins your Christmas. But don't let the devil keep you in that frame of mind. Seems he has used you to take some pot shots at the Lord today. Amazing how people will hear. I'm taking pot shots at the Lord 
at Christianity, not at the hypocrisy of the individuals claiming to be a Christian. So yeah, after I just say I'm tired of people saying I hate Christians, then I'm bitter. No, they're not going to address, they're not going to address the point. They're going to deflect from it because if they come back to it, they have to face themselves. So they're going to shoot off another untruth about someone. They're lying. And then it just goes on from there, you know, I'm um, this, I'm that, and of course, a lot of support for this woman. Um, but here, we, he would be righteously angered, you know, when I was talking about what would Jesus do. He would be righteously angered <coughs> with all the self-proclaimed Jesus followers. <coughs> Excuse me. We shouldn't be in such a mess. There's a lot of people who see the obvious. You have been almost the entirety of our population. The majority manifests the reality in society. You've been the majority. What have you manifested? You've manifested a very dark, evil nightmare. How could that happen? It happened because of that spiritual wickedness that manifests as hypocrisy. You're still caught in the lie. And Jesus overturned the money tables. He stood up against the Jews and their laws. He called them hypocrites. These Christians, I don't understand. We are joyful in knowing that the more terrible things get the closer, get get us closer to our salvation. We are joyful in knowing more terrible things are coming. Wow. Wow. I don't even know. That's the kind of thinking that is like, I hear sadism. My brother was joyful in knowing I was suffering. And unfortunately, I do get comments like this quite often. Any thoughts on what Jesus will say to you? <laughs> well, I don't know. But when I'm walking around that track, circle after circle after circle after circle, I do have a lot of conversations with Jesus and I could imagine him saying, damn girl, woof, you had quite the life there. I don't call myself a Christian, but I certainly understand what you are talking about. It's called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. See, if you don't hear from others, then it's easy for you to think, oh, it's only Carol, or it's only Jane, or it's only Mike. No, it's an awful lot of people who are even getting more tired and more disgusted with the hypocrisy. Now, do we want to cause you harm? No, we want you so much to take a look at it to do the spiritual work necessary to become a real, honest, loving, compassionate, caring human being. Carol, do you meditate? I am guessing from the amount of stress I hear in your voice now. Okay, no. And yeah, 
I live and have lived way too much stress 24 7 never lets up it has only gotten more intense and I'm going to post a video on on more of what I've been going through because I'm not alone and people are afraid to speak when they have been so brought down and that voice needs to be heard because the comfortable are not the only you're not the only ones in life but here I am a middle-aged college educated former liberal feminist white woman like you a lot of presumptions I'm not a feminist never have been we're in the realm of Satan and it's a spiritual battle evil feeds off our fear anger and apathy whenever a person finds inner peace and find love in their heart the world becomes a better place I disagree whenever someone finds their courage to be honest and real in the world the world will become a better place your emotions are doing more harm to you than any eternal source you have no clue who I am what I live what I'm about why do people I, I can't imagine writing comments like this to anybody it's not that you know I don't hear things or it may be speculated about but I understand that I could be wrong so I don't leave comments ever like this I find that so arrogant that people are and they often write it in the negative like you're doing something wrong but they don't know what you're living so um, they uh, yeah that that's the narcissistic thinking that that kind of comes with all of us that we see our experience as everybody's experience we hear some uh, things about somebody that we relate to and then we really think that their experience is our experience and I can tell you that I've not met one person who lives anything similar to what I'm living I'm sure they're out there I haven't met them yet and unfortunately I have met an awful lot of people who will hear what they relate to and think their experience is my experience and it's so not and it's unbelievable that they could based on what they know and very often it's not until I get into their life and I see I see someone who is okay uh, your mother's calling, your sister's calling, your brother's calling, you got a house, you got the inheritance from the uncle, you got, you're still living in the same uh, familiar area that you, you know and uh, well you've got your pets and you're able to work and and this was coming from someone who actually thought that their experience was my experience but the details are really important so I did go homeless because of my mother who did that grand finale manipulation and boom I was gone living in my car and then I hear from others who say they were homeless okay so we can relate on that level right but it changes when I hear that that was chosen by them because they didn't want to live with their mother very big difference 
from having a choice to not having a choice. And people don't really, they don't have the consciousness yet to recognize how they think, how it annihilates other people, how because they think their experience is your experience and it's not, but they think it is and then they say, well, you should do this and do that and then you'll be like me. But if it doesn't work or you don't do that because you understand that you're not them and you can't do what they're saying, but they think you can because you're posting videos. They judge you. Because they think that all of the data meets up and it's similar. And it's not. It's very easy to see very clearly that it's not, but that's how their mind is working. You're not even in the relationship yet. Until they clear up all of that stuff, that's when you become a part, an equal part of that relationship. If their thinking about you is so far from reality, how could you be in the relationship? And so many people do manufacture, you know, who you are instead of having that kind of mind that has cleared out their filters and yeah, did the work necessary to not have that need to bring someone down so that they can feel better about themselves and all of that, the et cetera, et cetera, all of those personal issues. When we get all of that cleared up, then we're ready to stand and allow someone to be who they are. When we don't have all that cleared up, we are forever in there messing things up and claiming this and that about the person and judging them and yeah it's a lot of work I was a Christian for 31 years a devout Christian no more I came to learn the devastating truth that Jesus was a psyop uh, an invented character just like you the purpose of inventing the character of Jesus was so that slaves would not retaliate against the ruling class and would be content with their lot in life and I know wow man are there a lot of Christians who are content with having almost nothing, struggling every single day. Christians who claim that God answered their prayers. And I have to wonder, why didn't they pray for something a little better than what they have? There's an awful lot of people who have different beliefs, Christians. I'm sorry to say this, but those of you who believe you've got the truth, your beliefs, you can only pick Christ or Lucifer. A lot of Christians who still are saying there's going to come a day when you've got to choose. That choice has already been made by the Christians who live a satanic life. You've already made that choice by not changing, by not trying to clear up the spiritual wickedness that's in yourself. You've made the choice to go with Lucifer. There's not going to come a day when suddenly Jesus arrives and says, who would you like to follow? And then you turn and yeah, Lucifer is there and says, I'll give you all the riches in the world. You've made that choice. You make it every single day. Everything that we do is a choice between Lucifer and Christ. 
you lie, you're with Lucifer. You continue to enjoy the fruits of that paycheck, and your work is contributing to the evil that is destroying a lot of people, you've made the choice, Lucifer. We're all sinners saved by grace. No, no, we're not supposed to keep asking for forgiveness for the same thing. We're supposed to repent and turn away from that behavior. Everyone in the Bible has messed up. That's what makes it so believable that we can change. Yes, you can change. And many people believe that just simply because they've accepted Jesus as their Savior, that's the change. That's it. No, it's not it. And Christians, don't even bother arguing with me about what Jesus said. Go, I'll forgive you of your sins, but sin no more. Done. Arguing with people. Well, everybody sins, and now uh, done with it. Done. You call yourself a Christian? Clean up your sinning. Because that's what Jesus said for you to do. Now you can provide all the justifications that you want, that you manufacture in your own brain, but that's all it is. It's okay for me. You know I believe in God, but I respect your opinion and I will follow your channel no matter what religion you have. We speak a lot about our freedom, but a lot of us don't respect your freedom to choose what you believe in. Thanks for your honesty. Rita, thank you. Thank you. Because you're in a very small minority. And I really appreciate when someone is not forcing their beliefs upon me, damning me to hell, um, but is giving me the respect, yes, that I deserve, that everybody deserves. But it seems only a few people can do that because this is what I read from this comment. Rita is secure within herself. She has her beliefs and doesn't need me to have the same belief. Those who are really insecure, those who are, th these beliefs that they have that are not necessarily their own, they're just adopted in childhood and carried on throughout adulthood, you see how weak they are when you simply ask a question about their beliefs and boom! The closed mind comes instantaneously. The attack comes. They won't answer a question. And they look at you as if, oh, they feel so sorry for me that I just don't understand. No, I'm just having a conversation to get to know you. So, yes, I really appreciate you know, and I, I give you the same respect. You know, this hatred I have for Christians, I don't have it. It's simply not existent within me. And, yeah, you know, anybody would say then, oh, but you're so upset, so you got to look at yourself. Oh, I have looked at myself. What upsets me is you side with my malignant family. And yeah, it's for the scapegoat. <laughs> there is some, and no matter, well, if you've been really destroyed by lies, you live your life desperate for people to believe you and desperate for people to speak the truth about you. 
And when you encounter over and over again people speaking lies about you, you can trust it's going to trigger a scapegoat. Uh, another person here uh, has a friend who researched the history of the Bible and discovered something shocking. If you have time, could you research the history of the Bible and make a video? No, I, I can't. I don't have the energy. I'm not in good shape. I don't have the brain to take on something like that anymore. But he is no longer a Christian. There's many Christians who are no longer Christians based on their own research. I agree with you, Carol. It amazes me how much Christians consider the threshold for righteousness is with peace and love for all. While I believe that's a large part, um, it is written, Jesus says, do not think that I come to bring peace on earth. I do not come to bring peace, but a sword. What's the sword? The sword is to cut away at all of the hypocrisy, the lies, the evil. No, Jesus, Jesus would be righteously angry at a whole lot of Christians. You know, you're absolutely correct. Now this subscriber sees it as Jesuits, and then I have subscribers who see it as the Jews. Um, I see it as evil and good. It's good versus evil. There's good and there's evil in all groups, in all races, in all religions, in all uh, nationalities, ethnicities. And there are many involved in the reshaping of this world. It's not just the Jews. It's not just the Jesuits. But I hear people who are very definitive when they state, it's the Jews, it's the Jesuits. Uh, there's an awful lot of evil people. And you know what? Evil people can organize really well because they have an agenda and they want to get the job done. So they put away their uh, insignificant differences. Instead, the good, <laughs> what are we doing? Um, so, bravo. Um, and this, you know, is a really great comment. If we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lay and do not practice truth. We lie, sorry. We lie and do not practice truth. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. John 3.18 We are called as Christians to spread the gospel and to be a light in this world. Part of being a light is to expose the darkness, to expose evil. Jesus spoke truth and the world hated him. He warned us that the world will hate us also. Speaking truth does not make one popular because people love the lie. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Um, he doesn't say, live as you please as long as you say you're sorry. Do I hate Georgia? No. I really, really, well, my response, great comment, thank you. There was another great comment. But here, Jesus is not a person, Jesus is our own imagination. This is my belief. We are consciousness in a form of human, in the form of a human. We are infinite. The only Savior is within ourselves. Now. Even when I say that last sentence, I have a bit of, oh my God, the backlash. People are going to think, I think I'm God. No, it has nothing to do with that. But you say the word consciousness and people think new age. You say Christ consciousness, and wow, you're the devil. You are the uh, shill who's, who's, sent here to weaken people's faith. You can't weaken a faith if it is a faith 
that also has a practice along with it and that practice that spiritual practice is lived it's the living part it's the doing the living that makes one strong it's the hey I talk good about myself but I don't live it oh you can really do a number on them like what we've been saying those who don't know who they are they're so easily manipulated so um, yeah of course you know she gets the comment she's wrong she's this she's you know and she writes what I know and believe has come from my own searching from within myself and this woman actually sounds quite she reads as strong after several years of searching, I have put many pieces of the puzzle together. You will always find exactly what you look for, good and bad. The truth is everywhere. Um, it's amazing. Well, I did the searching from within myself. But if you say that, you get attacked. Oh, you can't change unless you accept Jesus as your Savior. Your beliefs are so arrogant. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's really. Um, and then, of course, I get the Christians who, yeah, curse your soul, damned to hell. Um, I agree. I call them Sunday Christians. They are a soul sick collective with delusional beliefs. Um, now, there are subscribers who write things, and I understand them because I've seen the comments before. You know, I'll use the word sick, but it's not, you know, like the kind of insult that is used by, like, immature, oh, you're sick. And no, there's a sickness. There's a disease rampant in this country with Americans believing all of these things that are not true. The well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. They are sick people and they need to heal. And a lot of Christians who are filled with that hypocrisy are sick and they need healing. And the only way that they will ever get to a point of considering that maybe they're sick and they need healing is by people calling them out. Big sword swinging, cutting through the veil of lies. Yeah. He's not bringing peace. He's bringing the sword. Yes, 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 and he says he is true. And you must fight for it, for him, for us. Put on the full armor of God and frickin' fight already, people. This is the most important numero uno fight of our lives. It trumps all. Oh my goodness, please wake up and grow a pair. Wake up, love, unite, fight the good fight. If you think God is smiling down on you and is happy with your cognitive dissonance, apathy, denial, delusions, hatred, and weakness think again he wants expects and needs you to be his soldiers and fight for truth and this is the truth yes I'm right there with you fighting I will stand beside anyone Christian Muslim Jew black white homosexual, heterosexual, it doesn't matter. If you are a human being who regards the truth as sacrosanct and you are willing to fight for it, I'm there with you. I don't do the group hate thing, by the way. I never have. I've done a lot of thinking about what that is about and that comes from generally you're being taught that 
and then you just carry it on throughout your adulthood because you've never done any work on yourself. You just keep going on that group hate. You know, I actually do take every individual as they are. Black, white, homosexual, heterosexual. I don't care about that stuff. I care about how your mind operates. I care about your soul. I care about your heart. And are you real or are you Memorex? For the baby boomers, they'll understand that. Um, yeah. They've not found the courage to stand on the truth and need to hear from those who do. Of course, you're not even you've not even gotten to the point where you are calling out our real predator enemy thieves though you did refer to us as their goyim understand this i grew up i i was born in new york i grew up in bayside bay terrace queens predominantly jewish um most of my closest friends were jews my father married a jew my little sister is a Jew. My brother was a Jew, but he married a Pentecostal woman, and he converted. Um, and my family, Jew or Gentile, they're all screwed up. Where does that come from? The fabulous parenting. I do take offense to all of people who are writing Get Rid of the Jews. I take offense personally. I see that that soul is someone who has an awful lot of hate. I have posted many videos on how evil the Israeli government is, the Zionists. If you are, if you are someone who thinks, I'm going to say, it's the Jews, you are going to be waiting a long time. Kind of like waiting for Jesus to come back and make everything fabulous. Um, I There are a whole lot of people who believe it's the Jesuits, so we've got to keep an open mind and recognize that there's an awful lot of evil taking place with Christians. Christians who are involved in this. You know, the lie. How many Christians? You got the pastors, you've got Christians, the school teachers, uh, whatever, you know, a lot of pathological narcissist and um, psychopaths will choose professions that, oh, it's just the profession. God, you're so good. And behind closed doors, they're raping children. All right, I'm not going to go on with that because we know that, right? They call themselves Christians. There's a lot of very evil Christians who have so screwed up their own children's lives. There's a lot of Christians involved in the reshaping of this world. So I guess those who believe it's all Jews and want to get rid of them and then the world will be Fabulous. Are you claiming that this little segment of the population has so much influence over you that they have, they've got the power to make you do evil? You mean you're not strong enough within yourself to know what's right and wrong? It's the Jew that's doing it to you? I don't, look, now, 
<laughs> you want to not take responsibility? Wow, isn't there an easier way to do it? Because that is really For me, it's evil or good. Well, I disagree. You can't blame Jesus for man's sins. Ah, Pamela heard something that wasn't said. Ain't blaming Jesus. <laughs> no, honey. I'm blaming. I am blaming those who take the Lord's name in vain. You put that draping on yourself, that you're a Christian, and then you live a satanic life. Sorry. Uh, doesn't work. So it has nothing to do with Je Jesus. It has everything to do with man. So you don't believe in Jesus is the only way and has come into the flesh? What God do you worship then? You worship the truth over Jesus or something? I just want to make sure who exactly do you worship. If you don't worship Jesus and you worship only the truth and believe in truth and not Jesus, then you just may be the next person whom I might have to unsubscribe. I will not stay subscribed to those who don't believe in Jesus. Go, go, go. I forgive you of your sins, but sin no more on another channel, please. Yeah. You know how many people have unsubscribed me? Because I don't share the same beliefs. That's enough for somebody to say, Ciao, go. I don't need you. What I'd like is for people who, who I need people who have open minds, who can listen uh, without clouding up what is being said with their own experience and their own filters. I'd love it for people who have that, who have those filters, but have that open mind to say, okay, maybe I need to look at those filters. Um, I want people who are growing, who are maturing, who are living the principles that they speak. I don't want people who have such a closed mind that they can't stay subscribed to somebody who doesn't have the same beliefs as they do. You're a danger to people. So I end with that. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate, very unfortunate, that we have more Christians who attack than those who can actually listen and then respond respectfully, like Rita. I don't have the same beliefs, but it doesn't matter. We're certainly on the same page in terms of what we're doing here. You know, for the greater good. Um, and there were other comments that clearly are no longer underneath the video. Either they deleted them or YouTube did. But there was one about the Christ consciousness and how um, that's new age. And uh, someone said that they always thought that I might be a shilly or I was a shilly channel. Even when I had that other name, Kafka Winston World. Um, what is it that makes you stay and watch videos? for years when you don't trust them. So you're now writing that you thought I was a show back when I had Kafka Winston World. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but then, yeah, I was new age and Something about the Kundalini? I don't know anything about the Kundalini. Everybody makes these presumptions. You know, that, and they said it definitively, that I, I, was, I was trying to shatter people's faith. <laughs> no, I'm actually 
trying to make you stronger. And the truth does hurt, no matter how it's said. No matter how it's said. No matter how it's said. That's why comments disabled. Comments disabled. And it's not just two. There's an awful lot. Comments disabled. Tired of being attacked. Have a good day.